Good morning, boys and girls. At a tennis court today, we're gonna have a little tennis lesson. We've done some work on tennis in class, and uh, obviously the tennis courts are closed right now. Uh, people not able to play tennis. But uh, nevertheless, I'm gonna show you some things about this tennis court, explain some rules of the game. You can see that we have many different lines here on this tennis court but you can see that it is symmetrical, meaning that the lines are this equidistant, the same distance on each side. So you can see our tennis net is lowered there, but on the ends, you can kind of see what the normal height of the tennis net would be, right there around three feet high, a little bit lower typically in the middle, and you see there's a little white cap along the top of the net there. Um, boys and girls, a tennis player hits the ball into play by serving the ball. Serving the ball. And they do that by throwing the ball up in the air to themselves and hitting it with their other hand, which would be holding the tennis racket. And if I were serving on this side of the court, I would be hitting the ball over the net. The ball is not allowed to touch the net. I would be hitting the ball over the net into this square here. You can see this little square, or actually more of a rectangle that we have, but I would be hitting it diagonally across from me into my opponent's side of the court in this rectangular area here. If the ball landed over here, that would be a foul, it'd be out of bounds. Um, if it landed in this little narrow section, which we call the alleyway, that would also be out of bounds. It has to land in this rectangular section. If it went beyond that into the rest of the tennis court in this section, or all the way in the back there in the greener section, that would also be a foul and be out of play. You would get one more attempt to hit the ball in play. Now on your second attempt, if your serve hit the white cap at the top of the net here, that's what's called a let, and you would get one more serve. In tennis, if the ball lands on the line, it is in. If any part uh, of the ball is on the line, it's in, and they actually have very technical, high-tech instant replay for that. If it lands across the line, the entirety of the ball, then it would be out of play and you would lose a point potentially on that serve. You get two attempts to get the ball in play on your serve. If I were serving from this side of the, my side of the court and we switch every other serve, and you can see that there's a little white line here, and I can serve from anywhere from that little white line over toward the alleyway. Most players would serve more toward the middle uh, I have to hit the ball diagonally across to this side over here. Okay, back in the rectangle that is closest to the net. Now, once the ball is served in play, the, your opponent must hit the ball anywhere inside of the alleyways, which we discussed, and inside of this white line right here. If the ball were to go beyond the white line back in this section, that would be out, and the other player would receive a point for that. Anything in the alleyways here is out, unless you are playing doubles. Doubles means that there are two players on the same team playing at the same time. And if that's the case, usually one player plays closer to the net and the other player plays back in this section where we're standing right now. Now the goal of every good tennis player is to hit the ball deep uh, most of the time. You don't wanna hit the ball out in this area where our camera is, that's kinda no man's land. You wanna hit the ball back here toward the line or you wanna drop it just over the net to make your opponent run a lot and you also want to try to make them move side to side now one of the things that we want to do as tennis players 
is uh, sometimes we come to the net and we do what's called a volley. A volley, that means we charge the net and we hit the ball out of the air before it has a chance to hit the ground on our side. And what that typically does is that allows you to play the ball just over the net, hopefully surprising your opponent, making them have to come charge to the net and uh, if you place it just right, they usually do not have time to run from the back baseline all the way back there, the last white line we see, uh, to the net. So doubles, if I were playing doubles and my partner was playing over on this side in the back, I would generally stand up here in the front on this side. Now remember in doubles, all these alleyways here are in play. The tennis court expands, so I have to move over sometimes and make sure I'm guarding this area over here. A lot of times in doubles, a player will have to volley the ball out of the air since they're standing this close to the net, or they'll have to hit the ball uh, well over their head, a shot that maybe is going over their head. The presumption is that you are okay to come closer to the net even though you have less time to react because your partner would be playing in the back on this side and they'd be able to cover anything over on this side of the court. So tennis is scored uh, with your first point that you earn being scored is 15. Your second point that you earn being scored is 30. Your third point that you earn being scored is 40. And after you score a fourth point, you would win what's called that game. And you need to win a game by two points. So if you were tied 40-40 in tennis, we would call that deuce. And you would have to, to get two consecutive points to win that game over your opponent. And the first opponent to win six sets or excuse me, six games would win that set. Again, you must win by two sets, just like you must win by two points to win a game. So if it was tied at six games to six games, there would be a uh, tiebreaker to see who could win that seventh game. Men have to win three sets in a championship tournament to win the match. I know that most sports, you're trying to win the game, but in tennis, you're trying to win games so that you can win sets, so that you can win the match. Let me say that again. You're, in tennis, you're trying to win games so that you can win a set, so that you could win the match. And men need three sets in championship tournaments, and women need to win two sets in championship tournaments. A tennis match could take as long as four or five hours for men and as long as two or three hours for women. Uh, it could take as short as an hour and 45 minutes or two hours for men, or even as short as 50 or 60 minutes for women if there's a large mismatching competition. Uh, sometimes you'll see somebody wins 6-0 or 6-1, both of their sets and they'll maybe only lose a game or two to their opponent. Usually when their opponent is serving, sometimes they'll be able to take a set that way because it's easier to win a set, or excuse me, it's easier to win a game when you're serving than when your opponent's serving. Uh, but sets can go pretty quickly and matches can go in under an hour on the women's side. Tennis players are in exceptional shape. Tennis players do a lot of this of lateral side-to-side -side movements, but tennis players' heart rates are constantly beating, and uh, most tennis players do some type of running or other type of physical conditioning, but most of them do running. Most of them lift uh, weights pretty regularly because the stronger you are, uh, 